You Make It, We Mock It is a series where people from all over the world create designs they believe will handle the rigors of supersonic flight. The designs and materials used show the creativity and craftsmanship of these talented people. They may not have formal training in aerodynamics, but that hasn't stopped them from achieving amazing results. Today we have some very nicely crafted projectiles by no other than Evan Perry. Evan is the master of turning junk into treasure. In this case he used a, uh, I thought it was an acrylic display sign from a shoe store, but he says it's polycarbonate. But as you can see, Evan did a beautiful job uh, machining these and then polishing them. Now sometimes we have no idea what direction these are supposed to travel. I think what Evan was trying to do was kind of utilize the basic Diablo shape and simplify it. Now the Diablo shape is a tried and true shape that is very sound at supersonic speeds and it is based on the shape of a air rifle pellet. I'm going to assume it's supposed to be in this direction that it's supposed to be shot. But to make sure we're covering all our bases, we are going to shoot uh, one or two of them backwards and see how they fly that way. But bear in mind, this is an unproven shape, so we don't know if it'll be stable in either direction. Let's get out there and test them. Welcome back, Tau Flader folks. He's back. Jeff and Officer Greg back out here with you at the uh, hidden site. And uh, hey, I've been away for a little while. My, uh, my team at work was deployed to an Antifa rally up in Sacramento. And then as soon as we got back, we were sent up to the Chico fires to help control uh, looters and close off intersections and highways and provide security for some of the fire teams up there. So I've been out of the loop for quite some time. Uh, meanwhile, I'm checking in and Jeff's burning every fluid in his household in a test tube. So <laughs> before he lights toothpaste on fire, I figure I better get back here and let's start shooting some stuff again. <laughs> But today, only a few people complained, you know, it's like, come on. Your wife, when you start burning her cologne. <laughs> <laughs> it was old, man. Yeah. Before Jeff puts gasoline in a test tube and lights it on fire, we better get back to the safe stuff like shooting experimental uh, shotgun slugs. Hey, uh, you guys remember Evan from Texas. He sends a lot of stuff out to us and he has built these clear, Jeff's going to show you on the tabletop, but clear uh, Diablo shaped slugs. They're kind of Diablo shaped. Kind of Diablo shaped. He's, I think he's experimenting with different shapes and, and evolving them into different shapes just to see what will work or not. But these are clear acrylic with a little rod down the center, so that's pretty cool. They're very light. We're going to see what they do. Jeff has mounted the blue ones here, uh, forward facing at least. We, the, we think they're forward facing. <laughs> we think they're forward facing. <laughs> and the red ones, of course, have been reversed. So we're going to see which ones fly the best. We're going to shoot them out of a smooth bore and also out of a rifle choke and see if that doesn't uh, make any difference. We've got some pretty cool targets uh, for you out here today, some things we needed to destroy. Nothing but the highest dollar targets. That's right. We're no Sarkissian video. <laughs> we're not blowing up soda machines and, uh, and Apple computers. We got a bunch of junk we're going to shoot out here, so <laughs> I think everybody likes that anyway. So let's get to it. First shot against the ballistic jelly. But it's a clear round. Will we even see it? I don't know. That's why I put the blue marking on there. <laughs> it's like Wonder Woman's invisible jet. <laughs> All right. When you're ready. I am ready. Zero recoil. That was like shooting a pellet gun. All right. Here it comes. I promise you. There it is. Uh, it is tumbling end over end. We have no stability at all. It's actually surprising that uh, Greg was able to hit the gel at all. Well, if you look closely, you could see the steel pin actually got knocked out from the impact, so at least we had that. The slug was buried in about three inches into the gel. It almost made it all the way through. How far are we away? About 10 yards? Yeah. 10 yards. People always think it's like 10 feet. They That's They good. really don't know. On video, it foreshortens everything. It looks like like two inches away on yeah. video. It's touching your barrel. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go with uh, rifling, or the rifle choke. We don't have the full rifle shotgun here today, but so far these are doing well that we don't think we need it. Hope you're doing well, Danny. Okay, we're ready. All right, at the unnamed cola. Unnamed cola, yeah. We don't wanna anger the advertiser gods. <laughs> Which one are you aiming for? I'm going to aim for the one on the right because this shotgun tends to print a little bit left. Yeah. So. This will tell us a lot. 
We have double chance of hitting it. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Well, trying to add a little bit of spin using the rifle choke didn't yield any positive results. I don't even see it spinning. When it finally impacted, it was traveling backwards from the original orientation. Well, so far it's not looking too good. Sometimes, just the way I load things can cause the abnormalities. So I haven't given up yet. Let's continue with the lead plate. Let's give it a, another shot out of the smooth bore. I think it did better without spin. Forward facing round. It's the blue forward facing one, yes. Out of the smooth bore and we're gonna aim at the 20 pound lead plate. That's wonder, right. Everyone how heavy that thing is. It's 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 like several uh stone <laughs> as they say in England. Okay, I'm ready. Alright, I'm gonna aim dead center. Here we go. Wow. That one had a little more. That that one functioned a little better. Yeah. A little more pop. It actually made some damage on that plate and left a little tiny steel dingus right there. Yeah. Steel dingus. It's only like five and a half grams. They're very light. Steel dingus, by the way, happens to be the name of my uh, <laughs> thrash metal band. We uh, we cover mostly Metallica <laughs> and Slipknot. Wow. I'm actually kind of surprised though. It made a little divot and left that uh, that little steel core. <laughs> Are you being foul? No. <laughs> we try to keep this PG out here. That's right. Steel dingus would not approve. <laughs> Demonetize. <laughs> Finally, we have a little bit of stability. It's not tumbling. It's flying in the right direction, and it's fairly accurate. And as expected, being so light at only 5.5 grams didn't do a lot of damage to our lead plate. Okay, how about a giant pumpkin? We're just a little late with uh, Halloween, but... Uh, <laughs> you can keep pumpkins around until uh, Thanksgiving. That's true, yeah. It's a Thanksgiving pumpkin. My wife was under the impression this thing had gone soft, so I needed to get her get it out of the uh, off the front porch. <laughs> it starts attracting fruit flies and stuff. When your wife thinks that things have gone soft, you gotta <laughs> you gotta move quickly. Yeah. Open that back up. And make sure it didn't fall out. Okay, you're good. There we go. That one. Yep. And a little bit of a budge to it. <laughs> All right. Okay, where are you aiming? Right between the eyes, bridge of the nose. Okay. Let's do it. Are you ready? Yep. Here we go. Ha! Oh. Very accurate. Not bad. Well, this one landed exactly where Greg was aiming, right between the eyes. It's starting out pretty good. Here it comes. And then it starts to yaw a little bit and kind of keyholes. It's kind of hard to tell how large that pumpkin is. It's full of water and it weighs about 100 pounds. It's, it's very large and I almost got a hernia trying to pick it up. Okay, now let's see how they fly backwards. We have loaded in one of the red ones, which is a rear facing. We think it's rear. Or at least opposite from the last one. Yeah, so, yeah. Still got a steel core in the center. Yeah, they're all exactly the same, which is nice. Jeff's got uh, Taylor Swift playing on a radio downrange. <laughs> I can't hear it, but... It, you don't want to hear it. might it. be the cat pee. It's something about crying and ex-boyfriends. Oh, anyways. no. Okay, backwards facing. Let's see if we can hit it. Where are you aiming? Uh, dead center on that little round knob. Okay, on the knob. On the knob. Here we go. I'm ready. Aha! A little low and right, but did some damage. It looked not a very clean hole. Launching it backwards didn't improve anything. In fact, it almost wanted to flip 180 degrees and fly in the other direction. It looks like this design is almost there. It's just the balance or maybe the angles just are not ideal, but he's really, really close. All right, what's your uh, professional opinion? Well, it looks like it flew sideways, landed in here sideways. I was aiming right here at the little dial. Yeah. 
That's the Taylor Swift. When it, when it, ooh, ooh, look at that. When they're not very stable. They're not very accurate. That's the thing we want people to know. Jeff mentioned in earlier uh, commentary that it doesn't look like a very clean hole. I couldn't tell if he was talking about Taylor Swift or the shotgun slug, but turns out he was just mentioning the slug. <laughs> so we're going to try and dump it out of there, and if it's in a in a whole piece, we'll get it to. We'll, might be able to load it back into another shell. That's true. There it is in the battery compartment. We took off the underbelly of this. I didn't know it took batteries. Thing. Yeah. And, that, would, uh, that would cost a, like. <laughs> back in the day when $80 worth of batteries <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> would power your radio for two hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we found this piece of the uh, shattered slug in there. Still got the steel dingus inside and shattered little fragments off of it, but made it right through, pulling some of the little intestines out of there. <laughs> Sitting right there in the battery compartment. Yeah, let's save that. I'll do it. Uh, include that in the Patreon giveaway if anybody wants it. It's just a little <laughs> little souvenir that people, some people enjoy getting. Other than that, I can't hear any of the uh, T Swizzle tins anymore. Oh man! I think we are. Should have plugged it in. I don't think it worked anymore though. Oh really? The, the cat peed on it. <laughs> Which is better than most That's of the, what my wife said. Better than most of the radio we get these days anyway. So. Yeah. Okay, this one, it was loaded backwards. We showed that they're not stable flying backwards. That's our last one. So we decided to flip it around. And we remembered that a lot of people like to test them long range. And this is 25 yards. That's kind of long range. So you think it's long a, range? This is a red one that transitioned to be a blue one. Yeah, it's supposed to be blue. It's, so it's, it's confused. It's, it's identifying a, as a blue. Yes. Even though it's red. Right. It can use either restroom. Then. <laughs> Don't go there, man. <laughs> okay, we're gonna shoot at that little jug, and when they're flying for in the the right way, they they look like they're very accurate. This yep. will really tell us. I, it's going to have very little energy, but I, I don't think it would go much further than 50 yards even. Yep, we're about uh, 20 yards away right now. 20 yards, okay, I was thinking 25. 25, we're in there somewhere. Okay, almost 25. Okay, let's see if he can hit it. Ready? I'm ready. He hit it. That was a nice loud pop. Yeah. Good hiss. It looked like Evan's design was very close to being a stable design, but just wasn't quite there. Sometimes just slight variations in the center of gravity or the way the angles are can make a, a really big difference on the stability overall. Now Evan has created a lot of unusual projectiles for us, which I thought would never work, and many times I've been surprised and proven wrong. But I do applaud Evan for trying something different and, you know, modifying that basic shape that always works. It's always exciting when someone comes up with a new shape that's never been tested before that is very stable. Now don't worry, Evan will redeem himself in the next video with his boss slugs made out of cast iron. <laughs> yes, I did not think these would work, but as you can see, a very stable design and it's not the classic Diablo shape. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to your comments. Thank you.